Hi, I'm Josh Richards. I'm a hand surgeon in Oakland, California. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about distal phalanx fractures. Uh, the distal phalanx is that last bone on the tip of your finger. Uh, that injuries commonly happen here by getting smashed, uh, sometimes in doors of cars, sometimes at work, uh, sometimes from walking the dog or falling hard. Uh, most distal phalanx fractures are very stable injuries. Uh, very rarely do they need actual surgical intervention, but it does happen. Typically, that's with uh, the bone is very displaced. Uh, sometimes these injuries come from skill saw injuries or saw injuries where the tips get cut off and not completely, and then people have it sewn back on, and the tip of the, uh, that very tip of the bone uh, can take a long time to heal. However, that's also a stable injury. Uh, most of the time, so that's something a uh, hand surgeon can explain to you. Uh, most distal phalanx fractures, if they're reasonably well aligned, um, don't need a pin, but the occasionally a small nail or pin will be placed, typically from the very tip of the bone and placed uh, retrograde across the bone. It usually stays in for about four weeks, sometimes longer, buried under the skin. Uh, the one thing that's interesting about distal phalanx fractures is it often does not heal quickly on x-ray. So it can take many months before the x-ray shows that the bone is healed. However, it's often very stable to start activities again. So that's another thing to discuss with your surgeon. Even though the x-rays don't show it completely healed by six months or nine months, most people can be back to full activities. Uh, that's an unusual thing about distant phalanx fractures, uh, that they can take a long time to heal radiographically. What we call that is healed by uh, soft uh, tissue. So basically scar tissue forms between the bone and then it's stable enough to use for most activities, especially things like typing and writing and eating. So it's up to you and the surgeon to determine uh, when you feel safe for going back to certain activities. Typically, the bone uh, is splinted part-time, uh, a splint for protection, but then to come out of it, start early range of motion. Again, with most finger injuries, early range of motion is really important so that you don't lose permanent motion. Uh, most of these fin uh, fractures are stable enough to start early motion. So you'd wear a protective splint, take the splint off, work on, work on bending and getting motion back, and then put the splint on for activities. Uh, typically, about two months, about eight weeks, we'll say it's united enough to resume most activities, even if the x-ray still doesn't look perfect. Um, we declare that by exam often, so if you're non-tender over the fracture site, that gives us a clue that it is actually healed, even though the x-rays don't look great. So overall, it's usually about two months to avoid heavy lifting, pushing, pulling, uh, albeit some are stable for that. Uh, buddy taping is a reasonable thing, but usually you're wearing a protective splint that comes on and off. Uh, sometimes the x-rays drag on. It can take as long as 9 to 12 months before it looks completely healed on x-ray. However, uh, we typically return people to full activities well before that. Uh, thank you.